rich with atmosphere and metaphor, propelled by a soundtrack of hollow strums and whispering strings, David Lowry's The Green Knight is a kind of artisanal fantasy epic, whittling Arthurian legend into the rough shape of one of distributor A24's arty horror mood pieces. Over two plus hours, the film never stops dazzling the viewer with mythic imagery. During one interlude, which may be real or a vision brought on by mushrooms, the whole movie has the vibe of a psychotropic trip, pale, naked giants of almost extraterrestrial wonder lumber across the landscape. They're amazing, in their scale and otherworldliness. Yet so is just about everything captured by Andrew Droz Palermo's camera, affording the natural world of this medieval setting the same storybook or framing its supernatural intrusions. Among the film's most remarkable attractions is its title one, who arrives like a weed bursting from cracked tile, bringing a primordial earth god power through the gates of Camelot. Lowry first exercises his creative liberty in the transformation of this villain of classic literature into a menace of vegetative viridescence, with a face as rough as bark and an axe that sprouts flowers when laid in the dirt. He looks fearsome, and sounds even scarier, limbs creaking and groaning with every movement, as though they were the branches of an ancient oak swayed by high winds. Brought to life with help from Peter Jackson's Wetter Effects House, the knight is a creature of uncommon tactility, you feel like you could reach out and run a hand across his cork-like skin. Even the film's digital wizardry has a handmade quality. On paper, the knight was green only in hue. That's how the author, unknown to this day, described the towering challenger of his Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, and how everyone from J.R.R. Tolkien to Simon Arbitage have described him too, when translating the 14th century poem from Middle English into modern verse. What did he represent? Whole college curriculums have been filled with theories on the matter. A staple of academic study, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight has inspired endless interpretations and thematic readings over the ages. It's also spawned stage productions, operas, and two prior cinematic adaptations both written and directed by Stephen Weeks, neither well-remembered nor well-regarded. Lowry seems drawn to the story mainly as a symbolic text. He revels in its mysteries and ambiguities and internal conflicts, like the collision of an older natural world represented by the night with the new one of the New Testament. In shortening the title, Lowry lends it a dual meaning, the other green knight here is Gawain himself, played by reigning authority on plucky young strivers Dev Patel.